What's up, everybody? It's the Bowtie Boss. I'm here at Title Boxing Schaumburg with uh, none other than longtime veteran judge, longtime veteran referee, maybe even much more longer time NHB fighter, uh, Mr. Rob Hines of Combat Consulting. How are you doing today? Wait, because on the on the boxing front, you know the 10-9 mandatory round, right? 10 point must system as, as it is. Uh, there's conversation of whether or not that even fits in MMA and then how you judge against that. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you have some decisions where people say, hey, that's the worst decision I've ever seen in my entire life. You know, whatever. Or that's the best decision I've ever seen. Um, how does the 10-point must system work as it relates to MMA? That's a great question. And this is something that I answer all the time. And once we get done talking about this, people go, oh, now I get it. The 10-point must system is only the numerical scoring of a round. So you could have ABC, you could have one, two, three, it doesn't matter what it is. What we determine in MMA based on the 10 point must system is who is more effective in the fight. Right. It's not by volume, it's not by aggression, it's not by any of those things. It's strictly who's more effective in the fight. So the winner of the round gets 10 points and the non-winner of the round gets nine points or less based on the amount of damage or impact that has happened during the round. Right. So that's just a scoring system, that's all it is. What really comes into play is the criteria that you're evaluating each round on. That's where people really get confused about judging and they feel that, you know, things like CompuStrike numbers and all those things that don't make a difference in MMA yep. come into play and it really doesn't. Right. So it's understanding the judging criteria. It's the 10 point must system is just the numerical way it's scored. Gotcha. Now, um for myself, again, with the boxing experience, I know as a judge, if my back is to a fighter who gets hit, I can't score that blow because I didn't actually see the blow happen. How does something like that work with submission attempts or if you're on one side of the cage and, and there's an arm triangle all the way on the other side, you can't see how deep that is. How do you score that? Yeah, this is the tough part about being a judge, Rodney, because sometimes you're not evaluating. You're waiting. Right. You're waiting to see the result of an action. So basically, if I were sitting on one side of the cage and all the way across the cage these fighters are going at it and their backs are to me and I can't see something land or I can't see the, the integrity of a submission, right. I basically have to wait to see what's actually effective in the fight to evaluate that. Certainly. It's, it's, it's almost like we have to take a short break and, and not evaluate. We can't assume. Gotcha. Okay, so um, th there's been some fights that, you know, highly con controversial that you've been a part of um, or that other referees have been a part of and judges have been a part of. I think the, um, you know, like say the, the Will Brooks and Michael Chandler, which I have a, ma a massive vested interest in the winner or loser of that fight, but uh, that notwithstanding, you know, you scored it 48-47 uh, uh, for Brooks. One judge had it 48-46 because he gave Brooks a, a two-point round in the third. Um, kind of go through your thought train and giving that fifth round to Brooks versus giving that to Chandler. Well, that's a great example. So the fifth round itself, one of the things as MMA judges we have to do, and some do not, and they have to learn that skill, we evaluate the full five minutes equally. Right. There's none of this, you could win the round at the end of the round with a takedown, anything like that. We take the full five minutes into consideration. So when you look at the Brooks Chandler fight in the fifth round, Will Brooks for a little over four minutes and maybe a little under four minutes of that round was the more effective fighter, both right. standing and grappling. In that last minute or a little over a minute, Chandler turned it on and put on a really good show at the end of the round. Right. People see that at the end and they figure, well, this person stole the round, they won the round. Rounds aren't stolen. Yep. Rounds are evaluated, evaluated five minutes at a time. Absolutely, so in the same thought train, uh, fights aren't stolen either, right? So a lot of people say this guy won the fight because his fifth round was amazing. Right. But it's very easy as a fan to forget the previous four rounds. Uh, so how do you how, how do you help uh, judges understand that, hey, just because a guy does it better in round three than he did in round two, doesn't necessarily mean he won that round either. That's great, and, and it's another difficult skill to accomplish, but what we, what we tell people is, Every new round is a new fight. Right. What happened previously doesn't exist. Now, do judges always take that into consideration? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, but that's part of the education process. Right. What you really have to do is, once that five minutes is over, 
you, I say write it down, forget about it. Okay. The next five minutes is what it is regardless of what happened previously. So on that third round with Brooks Chandler, um, with you not scoring at a 10-8, what, what went into your decision to make a 10-9 for Brooks? Yeah, that's a great question. So across from me was, was another judge, his name's Todd Anderson, fantastic judge. He scored that round at 10-8 where I scored at a 10-9. Right. And here's the reason why. That, the majority of that round happened right on the opposite side of the cage where Todd Anderson was sitting. Right. So he could actually see, feel, hear the impact that was going on, whereas Will and Michael's backs were to me quite a bit of the time. Yeah. I could see Will Brooks being tremendously effective. I couldn't see the damage that he was doing in the result. Sure. So part of evaluating a 10-8 round is the, the amount of damage, the duration that the damage is happening, and the dominance. Gotcha. So I could see the dominance that was happening. I couldn't see all the damage. I wavered toward a 10-9, but what I do is I go back and I review these, and when I watch it from the TV view, I would have given that a 10-8 all day long. Right, and you don't necessarily have the benefit of a TV view in live time, right? I mean, you gotta turn that score in right when that round ends. That's it, when the round right. ends, you write it down and forget about it. And you know, the other judge and I, Todd Anderson and I talked about it, and he told me exactly what he saw, and, and it right. makes sense. So proximity of where the judge is sitting has a, has a big play on what you score Absolutely. sometimes. Absolutely. So for me, um, that actually happened right in our corner. So right in the corner is when Will was, was landing most of that damage. Mm -hmm. And I had my hands on, on that, uh, uh, that kind of grate. The catwalk? And I oh, can yeah. feel the impact from those punches. You know, 25 feet away, you don't necessarily know that's even happening. Right. right? You know, when you get to see people's facial expressions, you hear the moans and groans, right. you actually see the physical impact on the body, mm -hmm. that's what helps you assess the amount of damage. When you don't see those things, again, we can't assume that they're damaging, we just have to evaluate what we see, and sometimes from a distance, and with backs turned to you, it's gonna be different from the other evaluations. Right.